Hello everyone and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. Been a little bit since we made a video. Uh, I decided to build a new PC uh, for doing the Fusion 360 and videos. My previous PC was getting a little bit old in the tooth, or long in the tooth, old, however you want to call it. Uh, it was a Intel Core Duo, so doing Fusion 360 it did okay, and I didn't have any problems, but when I was trying to make the videos uh, for you guys and recording screen captures while doing Fusion 360, it was kind of falling on its face. Uh, that and I also do a lot of software programming, uh, as you found out in the last videos. I also do FPGA programming with Xilinx tools, and the Xilinx compiles were taking a lot longer. So I thought it was time to upgrade. I couldn't find a PC that fit my needs, and my needs are a little specific due to my situation of being a software engineer. Uh, I still use RS-232 serial ports. Um, I still use some older uh, DAC cards that are just laying around so they have a home. So I needed PCI slots, PCI Express slots, and I needed a case that could accept full height standard PCI cards. So with that said, I couldn't find a PC that fit just right. So I decided to go to go down the build road and I found a kit from Newegg that was pretty close to what I wanted so I just kinda pulled those pieces parts that they recommended and tweaked it up a little bit to suit my needs. So here's a shot of the computer. Um, it's all done. It took me a little bit longer to transfer all my stuff over and, and get it just right. Um, hence the lag in video. Uh, it was fun building it. Um, I built it with my son. Here's a picture of us at the kitchen table to mom's behest uh, putting together a new computer. So we're starting him off young and it was uh, it was a lot of fun. He helped quite a bit with the with the build. So here's the performance um, that we're getting out of the new computer and it completely blows away what we were using before. So in some of my videos if you notice Fusion was a little laggy while I was trying to rotate or zoom uh, or do tool paths. Uh, so here's a screen capture. I also upgraded my screen capture software a little bit. Uh, so here is uh, one of my more complex models. This is the dive light that I showed in the last video. And you can see highlighting and selecting faces is literally instantaneously. It's instantaneous. No matter how complex the geometry is on the face, I can just highlight it. And we can spin the model around like a top with no lag whatsoever. Now keep in mind that was while we were recording video as well. So doing Fusion 360, you know, all that graphics work and a screen capture in high def. If you notice the resolution, I was able to increase the resolution and frame capture rate significantly now. Um, and this will yield a lot better quality video. So I think it was well worth the effort of you know, building up this machine uh, to get it going. Uh, here's another example um, rendering in Fusion 360. So this is a, we're going to go into the rendering environment and uh, render an image uh, of this model. And you can see just off the bat, it's a lot faster, a lot responsive. You know, we've got the um, mirror image in, enabled, and then I'll enable canvas rendering. So now it's doing in canvas rendering in real time and we're doing video capturing all at the same time. Oh, and yeah, we can rotate it while it's in canvas rendering as well. Uh, again, the performance that we're getting off of this machine is, is immense. It's, uh, I'm, I'm really happy and, and satisfied uh, with what we were able to put together. Now, what really is nice, and is in this next little clip, I did a simulation of the 100 subscribers play button that we made a while back. Now, this simulation is amazing. So again, we're simulating and running a screen capture. I got the speed cranked way up just so that you can kind of see the simulation and get through it. And it is as smooth as silk. It's very fast, but it's also extremely accurate. So on my older PC, when I ran the simulations, I got a lot of faceting, um, you know, in the in the 3D form that was generated from the simulation. And this simulation is just so much smoother and so much more precise. So you can actually see uh, 
real quick in there. If you look in the, in the center of the top of the one, there's this little tiny nub that I missed when I originally cammed um, the file. And I didn't see that in the old simulation. So in, in this simulation, you can see it. And again, I can just rotate around, spin stuff around with no lag, you know, no jitter whatsoever. So, you know, we're going to get some a lot better videos using this machine. So if you hung around, um, thank you. I know probably a lot of you guys, you know, aren't PC enthusiasts. Um, I'm going to go through what I built and why I built it. So if you're looking for a PC, you kind of have an idea of maybe what to shop for. Or if you're building something, you could build this exact PC um, if you want. So starting off with the processor. Um, the processor is actually very critical, especially for Fusion 360. Uh, Fusion 360 does not utilize the GPU processors. No, so I put a, a ripping video card in this thing and I noticed that it only uses about 20% uh, of the GPU while you're doing orbiting and zooming and moving the models around. But for the rendering, the drawing, the camming, that is all 100% raw CPU usage. So putting the best CPU in that you can afford is going to pay off in spades. Now, I didn't put, you know, the best, biggest CPU you can get in here. Um, I went for value. You know, I didn't want to drop a lot of coin. The total cost here for this system, for just the box, was about 1300 and a half. It was like 1350-ish, just a little under 1400. So I, you know, I didn't want to break the bank, but you know, we definitely put a lot of horsepower in here. Um, video cards definitely get a dedicated video card. Do not use onboard video. Uh, it is leaps and bounds better when you put a real video card in. I don't know if you have to put the video card that I used. Um, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Let's let's go over some of the parts. So the processor I chose is an Intel i Core 7, but it's a it's a very specific chip so there's a whole bunch of iCore 7 processors in the family the chip that I selected is one of the highest frequency chips so this is a 4 gigahertz chip uh, Intel is just releasing some newer chips that I think are going to be around 4.2 gigahertz so if you wait two or three months you can probably get your hands on one of those for about the same price point um, but it's a 4 gigahertz chip and that's important because you know it's either speed or cores and if you get both, you can really get a, a ripping machine. So with the four gigahertz uh, chip, and then you know if you want, you can do what they call overclocking. I didn't, you know, I just left it at four. And then it's also what they call a quad core chip. So there's four processors in the chip at four gigahertz, and then it's got what they call hyper threading. So it kind of emulates an eight core chip. So you've got eight threads that all can all run in parallel at 4 gigahertz. Um, Fusion 360 does a wonderful job at utilizing multiple core chips. So every core that you add, you're going to get a huge performance gain. Um, so this chip, and it's the 6700K Skylake chip, um, I feel is the pinnacle of value versus price. So the next chip under this isn't that much cheaper, so go with this one so you get more horsepower at a relatively small monetary increase. But once you go over this chip, you have to start spending more and more money to get the next level of performance. So this is like in the sweet spot of the performance value curve. So that's the chip that I chose. Uh, then I had to get a... Um, so then we got to cool the chip. I just went with a tower cooler. Um, anything with heat pipes will do fine. Again, whatever you want to use. I wouldn't use just a solid core slug heat sink. I definitely would get a heat sink that has you know heat pipes in it. Um, I'm not a water cooler guy. Water leaks. No matter what fluid you put in there, if it leaks, it gets all over the place, and it either a makes a mess or b destroys your system or both. So, you know, heat pipes are good. Uh, then we needed a motherboard to put the chip on. Uh, I kind of partialed a uh, Asus. So that's what I went with. This is a Z170 uh, chipset motherboard. And the reason why I went with this specific model is it has some PCI slots. And I needed that for my other requirements um, that are outside of you know, Fusion and CAD CAM. 
So then we needed some RAM. I went with uh, 2400 megahertz RAM and this is 16 gigs of RAM. I doubled it up and went for you know 32 gigs of RAM. Unless you have a need for 32 gigs of RAM, don't buy that much memory. I don't think you'll ever use it. Uh, with Fusion 360, the most I see used is about 15% of the full 32 gigs. So you could put in, you know, 16 gigs of RAM, and you're still only going to be using about 50% of that. Um, I put 32 in for my daytime job reasons. Uh, I use a lot of RAM in some of my computations. Um, so that's why I put so much RAM in. For video card, again, don't use the onboard video. You should get a dedicated video card um, for Fusion. Uh, it does use a lot of video processing to generate the 3D models, etc., that you can see on the screen. Now, this video card definitely is overkill for just Fusion 360. This is a gaming video card. Um, it's at it's it, again this is at kind of the pinnacle of price versus performance sweet spot the next card up you go up a hundred uh, hundred and fifty bucks uh, in price for only about you know twenty percent more performance so it's a significant increase in price for only a little tiny increase in performance now I will tell you this using using fusion 360 the most I've seen the GPU get used is about twenty percent on this card so again this card is way overkill um, for Fusion 360, you can probably go with maybe a 1050 card and be just fine. So this is a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070. And it's got 8 gigs of video RAM. Okay. Um, for my main drive, I, I bought a small solid state drive. So this is a 250 gigabit-ish solid state drive. Uh, this is where all my main programs are stored. Uh, solid state drives are great because they're very fast access. Um, but they're also pretty pricey. Once you start going over 250 gigabytes, now you're getting into the couple hundred bucks for a drive. So for data storage, we just put a standard hard drive in. I just threw a Western Digital one terabyte drive in, um, and I've got it about 75% full already with all the videos that we do. Um, so I'll probably be getting another one and putting, them in, putting in another bay. Uh, now to power everything, you want to get yourself a pretty good sized power supply. Um, this is just a 650 watt modular power supply, um, goes in the case, I just use a standard case, um, this is kind of a gaming case, it was cheap, you can use whatever case you want. And then I threw in a couple of extra fans. Now fans, it's very easy to go overkill on fans, but what I like to do is I like to put in more fans than I need and then use a fan controller to run them at a much slower speed. Okay. So by running the fans at a much slower speed, like 30 or 40 percent of their rated speed, they are very quiet. So they'll get the job done and they'll be very quiet. And then with a fan controller that is thermostatically controlled, you will only start revving up, you know, when you're actually using heat and using power of the computer. So uh, fan controller, I switched over to Amazon for the fan controller. Um, I found this guy and he works really, really good. There's a little... Uh, app that you run on the PC, it runs in the background, and this is an internal USB, it connects into one of the motherboard USB connectors, and it has plugs for six fans, and you can program a, a temperature curve. So it will monitor the CPU temperature, and as your CPU temperature starts to increase, you know, it will ramp up the speed of all the fans. So I connected all my case fans to this guy, the CPU fan I left on the motherboard because I, I feel there's there's a hardware control loop there. This is a soft control loop, so I didn't want to you know dedicate the CPU fan to this guy. But I put all my case fans on it, and I I really like how it operates. So as a CPU starts generating heat, if we're you know putting a heavy processor load on the machine, all the case fans will start to ramp up slowly and push more air through the case to get the heat out. So that was that was a really good. I like that thing. And then last, um, I do a lot of photography and stuff, so I needed a me nice memory card reader. So this is a USB 3.0 uh, memory card reader and a USB expander. Now, I kind of got myself in a little trouble here. It doesn't implicitly say, but this is a 3.5 inch drive, drive uh, bay size reader. And the case I have doesn't have any 3.5 inch slots. It just has 5.25 inch slots. So we had to 
get some brackets. Luckily, I had some brackets still left over from last time, and uh, adapt it to a five and a quarter inch uh, base slot. So you know, take note of that if you uh, actually build a machine to make sure you got the correct slot size in um, for what you need. And that will just about wrap it up. So there's the PC we built and the performance that we're getting out of it. So we should be able to make some nice uh, new Fusion 360 videos with uh, much better uh, frame rates and resolutions on the screen captures. So I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video.